Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election map, but if Joe Biden's silent majority turns out scenario. So this is not, you know, my actual prediction. Similar to 2016, in which Donald Trump's silent majority, uh, quote unquote, uh, you know, came out and it helped him win the presidency, basically overperforming the polls. So as we all know, Biden is losing to Trump currently based off of polls. So basically, if Biden were to overperform the polls, that would mean his quote unquote silent majority would turn out enough to uh, have him reelected. So, but before we get on with the map, make sure you guys are subscribed and click the bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video instead of missing out on any of them. And also, if we have memberships, so if you are looking for that, it's pinned in the comment section down below. We have custom perks and custom emojis that you can use every time you comment on any of my videos. Now, back to the topic of today's video. So let's fill out the map. I think uh, Florida will be likely for Donald Trump. I think Texas would also be likely. Even a state like Ohio. I don't think those states will get too close. I think Florida is pretty much a lost cause for Democrats at this point. I think basically the state entirely abandoned the Democratic Party. And then same thing goes for Ohio. Even though Ohio is considered a swing state, I just don't think that it's going to be... I, I just think the state has shifted too far to the right for it to be even somewhat close, somewhat competitive, even in a scenario where Biden's silent majority comes out. Because in 2020, Biden did very well, and he still could not do good in uh, in Ohio. So what makes you think he will in 2024? It doesn't make me think that. So, I mean, it's not going to come close. And then Texas, I think, is actually a little bit more uh, red than what some people may think. They probably think that the state, even though it's still trending to the left in favor of Democrats, I still think Texas is pretty much overwhelmingly Republican, uh, in my opinion. So that's what I think Trump should win it by around seven percentage points. And now moving on to the likely states for Joe Biden in a scenario in which the silent majority turns out for him. I think Colorado uh, would be likely for him. Uh, I think uh, New Mexico would also. Colorado is pretty much, you know, the polar opposite of Florida. It's shifting towards the left in favor of Democrats. Even though it is already a blue state, it's getting even bluer than it already it pretty much is. You have these Californians moving to Colorado turning the state uh, more blue and then similar to New Mexico I think New Mexico might be somewhat more competitive and closer than Colorado Colorado would be but I still think Biden should handle Trump in those states I think he should comfortably win those I don't expect it to be competitive or close at all and then the lean states moving on to the lean states I think in this scenario I think the only lean state uh, for Donald Trump would be uh, in, in North Carolina in the scenario in which Joe Biden's silent majority uh, turns out I think Trump should win North Carolina by around two percentage points in this scenario keep in mind he won it by one and a half points back in uh, 2020 in a more favorable year for Joe Biden so I just don't think Biden will flip North Carolina because if he couldn't even flip it in more of a favorable year then obviously 2024 is less favorable for him I mean he's definitely not going to flip it now and then moving on to the lean states for Joe Biden in this scenario in which he outperforms polls, basically getting the silent majority to turn out for him on election day or election night. Uh, I think Arizona would be lean for Biden. I think he uh, wins Michigan again. I think Minnesota will also be lean for him, as well as a state like uh, New Hampshire would be lean for him. So let's start off with Arizona. Arizona, they just elected their Democratic governor in the 2022 midterm. So obviously the state is shifting in favor of of Democrats. You take a look at recent elections past. McCain's margin of 11 points back in 2008, and then it shrunk to 7% uh, in 2012 with Mitt Romney, and then it shrunk to 3% of a margin for Trump in 2016, and in 2020, you finally seen the state flip blue on the presidential le uh, level for Joe Biden. Obviously, every single election, Republicans seem to lose support in the state of Arizona. And I think it's just soon to be a blue state and expected to vote blue for the majority of times because it was once a red state and now all of a sudden it's a purple state and it is uh, becoming more common that Arizona is electing Democrats. So expect Biden to win it by roughly, I would say one to two points, similar to the margin he won it back in 2020 in this scenario in which, you know, he overperforms the polls and the silent majority uh, comes out for him, which is going to be obviously terrible news for MAGA. And then moving on to some of these Rust Belt states like Minnesota, I think it's not going to get, I mean, no matter how close it does get, it may get somewhat close, but I think Biden should win that state. I don't think Trump is going to win it. 
I, I think Biden wins it by around five percentage points. Obviously, not with the great margin of eight points that he got in 2020. I think a lot of that had to do with BLM, which we're not going to see this time around. So it might not drive as much turnout. But in this scenario, I think Biden should win Minnesota and then Michigan. Despite uh, you know what's happening, despite the rhetoric, I think I think Biden is going to win Michigan in 2024 because I th- I just think the margin. Uh, it's just too much for Trump to overcome of 3%. Keep in mind, Biden won this state by over 200,000 votes back in 2020, which is around 3%. And I just, I'm not sure if it's enough for Trump to overcome. I think it's, I think it's a little bit too much for him. And I think Biden should win this by about one percentage point, maybe even less. It can get really close, but I think it's, Biden's going to nearly win on to this state. But, you know, with the backing of the very approved of, very well popular governor of the state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. She endorsed Biden and she won by double digits on the governor's race. So with her endorsement, uh, with her support, you know, backing President Biden, I just think that maybe she can carry him over the top, which is why governors are very so important. And New Hampshire, similar to Minnesota with the margin, they voted for Biden by around roughly eight points back in the 2020 election. So considering that already, I can just say that Biden should win this state pretty easily. I mean, it's going to be close. It's going to be a hard fought win, but I think he still wins it by around five percentage points. And then moving on to the uh, tilt states, every single state remaining that we have not filled out yet will either be tilt for Trump or tilt for Biden. I think in this scenario, I think Georgia would be tilt for Trump. And then I think Wisconsin would also be tilt for Donald Trump, even if, you know, Biden overperforms the polls and his quote unquote silent majority uh, turns out for him on election day. I still think Trump should win Wisconsin and Georgia because the margins in those state, you know, the margin of error was just so close. Biden only won these both of these states by under percentage point, which shows you how close it was. Wisconsin, for example, you only won it by roughly 0.6%, which is actually less of a margin than Trump did of 0.8 points in 2016, uh, which is roughly 20,000 votes. And then Biden won Georgia by 10,000 votes, uh, 0.3. I mean, that's how, that's as close as it gets, guys. Come on. So I think Trump, even if Biden overperforms, I still think Trump is going to win Georgia and Wisconsin because, you know, they were just so close and more of a favorable year for Biden. And we're talking about 2024, which is the opposite, more favorable for Donald Trump. And even in this scenario, I just still think Trump should hang on to those states. Georgia, I think he wins it by route, uh, you know, 2%. And then Wisconsin would be decided by under a percentage point, just like how it was in 2016 and in 2020. And the last two states to cover in this video would be Nevada and the Russellville state of Pennsylvania. In this scenario where Biden overperforms expectations, uh, similar to what Trump did in 2016. And the quote-unquote silent majority comes out for him. I think he should hang on to Nevada. And I think he should win uh, Pennsylvania again. So as for uh, Nevada, I think Clark County is going to be very hard uh, for Trump to, you know, do good, to flip. I mean, he doesn't have to flip it, but he's going to have to peel a lot of that support away. And Clark County, the Las Vegas area, is a stronghold for the Democratic Party, in which is keeping, holding Republicans back from actually flipping the state. For example, 2022 midterms, Adam Laxalt was, you know, poised to do good. He underperformed expectations, resulting in his loss to Catherine Cortez Masso. So even though people are saying, despite the rhetoric, that Nevada's, oh, trending towards the right in favor of Republicans, I mean, you know, Republicans, I think, are overhyped in this state overall, and I think they should really humble themselves because you can very well be seeing a blue Nevada in this year's election cycle. And that's for Pennsylvania. Biden won this state back in 2020 by roughly 80,000 votes, I believe, which is a little bit over a percentage point, around one point, uh, which is not a great margin at all. But uh, Trump is actually currently winning this state by, on average, I think, one to two percent uh, with the poll. Uh, yeah, one percent with the polls. So if Biden were to overperform that by just around one to two points. Uh, he actually easily wins that. I mean, not easily, but it will be close, but he should win it. I think Erie County will be one of the most important counties uh, in northwestern Pennsylvania to watch. I think whoever wins that would probably win the entire state. Uh, you know, Trump won it in 2016 and then Biden won it in 2020, you know, mainly resulting in his victory in the state of Pennsylvania. And then if Biden does well in the, you know, Philadelphia area, the uh, the Pittsburgh suburbs, those type of suburbs and area, I think he should do. I, I think he, he could very well win this state, but it's going to be close no matter what, which is why I have it a tilt margin, which is within under a percentage point. And then there you guys go. In this scenario in which President Biden overperforms the polls and gets his silent majority out, 
similar to 2016, but for Trump, but this time it's for Biden. He barely wins the election. It's going to be close with 277 electoral votes. Donald Trump narrowly falling short as just 261 electoral votes in this scenario. So let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think that this scenario is likely? Do you think it could happen in which Biden's silent majority turns out for him on election night, which will shock MAGA? And uh, let me know uh, what states you agree with, what states you disagree with, and let me know your overall thoughts on the map in the comment section down below. And one last final reminder before I end up the video is to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video instead of missing out on any of them. And also we have memberships, so if you are looking for that, it's pinned in the comment section down below. We have custom perks, custom emojis that you can use in the comment section whenever you comment in any of my videos.